All right, lesson learned once again. 33 years in this business and I almost made a mistake. I was getting ready to change this compressor, thinking it was open, thinking it was bad. When in reality, somewhere between right there, where that black wire is, there, that terminal, and here where it goes to the top of the contactor, it's open. It's no good. So I thought I had an open winding between the, you know, red and black here. I mean, it was open no matter what. I thought I had an open compressor. Now this is an old harness, as you can see. It's a little bit dirty. Came out of another unit, I think. Yellow. I think that came out of a carrier or ICP or something. But I plugged it on. Stuck these two wires to the top of the contactor and the capacitor. Punched the contactor in and she fired up. So I won't be needing the torch, won't be needing a lot of stuff, won't be needing the little extension and bit for the bolts. All I got to do is take this lid off and fish these wires through and I'm going to fire this thing back up. And, and here I thought I had an open winding on the compressor. So, like I say, check everything out thoroughly. I hadn't really seen any of these bad that weren't visually bad. Let's see if I get the light that we can see in there. All right, I got the light on now. Well, I'm not sure where, and we'll get it out and look at it when we get this out, but somewhere between there and the contactor is a bad connection. Let's fix it. All right, so I pulled the lid off in order to fish the harness through um, the way it goes. Looks like that harness actually uh, had a bad life right here. So it was down in that little spot instead of through here like it's supposed to be. Now was it like that from the factory? I don't know, but you can see some marks on the start wire as well. The orange is what goes to the start on the capacitor. Um, so I don't think it was over there too, but this blue wire black with a blue stripe was definitely down in that you can even see some black stuff there from shorting so had to have been tripping the breaker and the breaker got reset a couple times or something and then before you know it it's open so there's the problem. I think we can just fix this inside of here with a wire nut, not really worry about fishing it through, plug it back on and she'll start. So let's do that. So before some of you carry on of how, you know, wire nuts are not a good connection. If this had been outside in the weather under, under there, I probably would have used one of the heat shrink low temp solder connectors that I made a video about a year or two ago. I really liked them and they're tough. This is protected inside this cavity here with these 
open electronic parts and connections, a, a wire nut is going to be fine. It's going to be fine with me. I inspected these wires really close, and I can see that's just the sparking and burning from the wire in there that as it was cutting. I tell you what, I, I'm not sure what that notch is for, but that's where that, that black wire was. Anyway, we've got it back together. Um, stuck a carrier bracket on with the fatter USA made 40 by 5. I'm going to put the fan back on it, reconnect the harness, and we're going to fire this thing back up. And of course, we made sure not to make the same mistake Train made at the factory and made sure all the wires are underneath the conduit and that none of them are over here outside of where they're supposed to be. I don't know if y'all can see that, but you can see where it was. Pull that conduit over a little bit. You might be able to see where the wire was coming through. So we got them in the right place now. I'm gonna take a couple of zip ties and just tighten these up and put the door back on and we're gonna crank her up. I did a little test run um, when I had that other harness. So the contactor's in, I hear it buzzing. And there we go. Compressor and fan are running. Um, here comes the warm air. It's already starting to pull heat. So I called inside to the customer and asked her to go turn the thermostat back on, which she did. And we are almost out of here. And I tell you what, I came really close to just uh, recovering this thing and changing the compressor. And I am certainly glad I didn't. Um, and I'll tell you what saved the day here. I just happened to be on the phone with, uh, with our service tech and he just mentioned, just, you know, hey, what are you doing? Here's what I'm doing. Where are you at? Here's where I am, that kind of thing. And he just mentioned, you know, pulling the lid, you know, did you check the whole circuit? And I said, nope. Uh, found the open winding from right here and didn't follow the wire, but I sure am glad he mentioned that because I'm finished now. It's Saturday. Um, and I had everybody so busy that I was going to have to change this compressor myself. Looks like the disconnect is about to fall off the wall. And somebody has sealed up a big hole in the top of it with silicone. So we're going to offer a new disconnect to the customer. Maybe two of them while we're here. Those plastic ones get weathered um, and we'll install whips. It has that UV wire that is, you know, as per building code, you can run those wires outdoors. It's UV protected. But anyway, we're up and running. And I was, I, I don't have any film of the beginning diagnostic or anything. And I was not going to film the compressor change out. Um, no sense, uh, you know, I've got several of those, so there's just no sense in another redundant video. Anyway, when I found what was going on, I started filming and showing you, look at this guys, don't, don't mess up like I came really close to doing. And uh, 
Yeah, I'm glad I didn't. So she's up and running. So there's the compressor. New from train. Uh, and I was just about to put it in. So I don't know. I'm going to get them on the phone uh, Tuesday. They're closed Monday. I'll get them on the phone Tuesday and ask them if they can reverse the claim and give them the compressor back. Either way, got a happy customer. So let's move on. Thanks for watching.